I can't tell you guys how honored I am to be here. Thank you, Schillers. This is just so exciting. Oops, it says something went wrong already. <laughs> Yikes. OK, let's see how this goes. Where's my clicker? All right. OK, um, I'd like to start by mentioning that uh, when I did the podcast with Warwick, I did it with Carolyn Resnick. And unfortunately, she could not be here today. Um, but for those of you who don't know Carolyn, she is my dear friend. She is my mentor. And we are business partners in the Carolyn Resnick method. And She's a luminary in the world of horsemanship, and she's dedicated over six decades to understanding and working with horses. And her multifaceted career spans roles as trainer, breeder, clinician, author, and she's an expert in wild horse behavior. And from this wealth of experience, she developed a method of liberty training based on the natural instincts of horses and how they communicate with one another. And she calls it the waterhole rituals. And at the heart of her method lies a profound objective to cultivate a magnetic connection with horses, one built on the foundations of love, trust, and leadership. And this connection forms the cornerstone of her philosophy, which is often referred to as the training before the training. And it's not just a technique. It's a way of life with horses. So your vibration is your tack. What does that really mean? Well, for me, it's a metaphor for several things. I'm a Liberty Horse trainer, and I work with horses in a free and open environment where they are free to choose if they want to connect with me or not. So there's no tack. And all I have is my vibration to connect to the heart of the horse. I feel it's much the same in life. How do we navigate our lives? Are we aware of our vibration? Are we mindfully paying attention and listening to our inner wisdom, our intuition? And what is our perspective on things in life? Dr. Deepak Chopra says that there is no such thing as coincidences, only miracles. He says that coincidences are two incidences, incidents that happen at the same time that are messages from the universe to give us information and direct us to the purpose, to our purpose in life. And it's called synchro destiny. And when I first titled this talk many months ago, <laughs> I had planned to share liberty training and the waterhole rituals. First, because it's my passion, and also because it's my mission to share this method with the world, to give horses a better deal, and to help humans heal and transform their lives through the way of the horse. But then, someone came to visit me. <laughs> Tyler and Warwick came to Costa Rica in August. And one night after dinner, and that was an amazing fun dinner, and we had a great talk. Oops, something went wrong again. Anyway, um, one night after dinner, Warwick asked me, OK, so what's, what's your TikTok title? And I told him, and he was loving it. And he, I said, you know, I'm going to share all about the waterhole rituals, and I'm going to teach liberty training. And he said, that all sounds great, but he encouraged me to share my journey. And I had already told him, I already shared my journey on the podcast, and I don't really have any other thing to talk about, and everyone needs to know the waterhole rituals. And he just kind of smiled, and I was kind of dead set on what I was going to do. So I thought about it, and when I got home, I realized that I learned something about myself. I'm really comfortable teaching in large groups in clinics with horses, when there's horses in there. But I don't really like to shine the light on myself. And that was something that was really new to me. Sorry, 
I didn't think I was going to start this already. <laughs> it was really new to me because I have never been on a stage <laughs> and spoken without a horse or with Carolyn or someone else to put the focus on. So this meant that um, I had to get on stage uh, by myself and talk about me, and I was really out of my comfort zone, and I shared that with Warwick. And so the next day, he and Tyler were leaving, and they came up to the house, and we were saying our goodbyes, and he walked over to me, and he put his glasses down on his nose, and he grabbed my arms, and he looked into my eyes, and he said, whatever you share will be fine, but you have a story, Nan. Share your story. <laughs> and you know what? I have chills right now. But at that moment, I got it. He was telling me to go deeper. And I heard him because I was paying attention. I was mindfully paying attention. So the reason that I'm sharing this is that these last eight weeks since he left, preparing for this talk has been... <laughs> a life-changing part of my ongoing journey about learning about myself. My poor husband, oh, is bad. I told him he could go down and live in the guest house if he wanted to go till I was finished with this. But I had to take a look at some things that I wasn't aware of about myself, and this information brought so much healing and transformation. So, you know, there's no coincidence that Warwick and Tyler came to visit me at this time in my life. I really believe that the right people cross our paths when we need them most. So, thank you, Warwick. So, I thought about it, and I thought if I could choose just one thing, because I only have 20 minutes, that has truly transformed my life, what would it be? And I realized that one of the most important things that I have learned from Carolyn Resnick and the horses is awareness. To mindfully pay attention, to listen to my intuition, and to be completely present to each and every moment. So today I thought I would share a glimpse into my journey through the lens of several life-changing events that dramatically reshaped the course of my life and how my perspective on these events is so different today than it was back when those things were happening. So I've had horses for most of my life and as a teen I was dead set on being a horse trainer. But my parents had different plans. They, <laughs> they informed me I needed to go to college, get a real job, and so I did just that. And after college, I began working really, really hard. And I was going to achieve that American dream and make them proud because I knew that's what they wanted for me. And I had several businesses. I had an amazing husband, two beautiful children, a nice home, a thriving business, and I thought I had it all. But my life lacked meaning and purpose. And I didn't really know it then. But I realize now that my purpose in life had become my success. And I read somewhere that when your purpose is rooted in your success, your purpose is fragile. But when your purpose is rooted in who you're becoming, you never lose your purpose. And in 2005, I was about to see just how fragile my purpose really was. We were living in Key West, Florida at the time. Oh, that's me. when I. Was, that was my purpose, success, 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 success. I know, it's a funny picture. Anyway, so we're living in Key West, Florida at the time when Hurricane Wilma came through. A Category 5 hurricane came across the Florida Keys, and it was followed by a huge ocean surge. 
and it flooded our beautiful little island. It was devastating, not just to us, but to our entire community. And we, amongst others, lost everything. And we worked really hard for a few years to pick up the pieces. But the harder we worked, the worse it got. And it just kept, this just like money just kept getting dumped in. I had a design center at the time, and nobody was doing that because they didn't even have any houses, right? So then in 2008, when the economy crashed and the real estate market went upside down, we knew we would not be able to recover from it. It caused me severe depression and anxiety, and I could not see a way out. But there was this blessing in it. We still had this beautiful piece of land in Costa Rica that we had bought for retirement. And this was our dream property. And we were waiting for that moment where we could enjoy that and go back and forth and have that life of retirement. And now the question became, should we sell it to save the ship in Key West? Or should we jump into the void and take the road less traveled? So we did just that. We headed to Costa Rica, and we started over. So the first thing I do when I get to Costa Rica is what anyone would do with limited resources. What do you think that was? I look for horses. Yes, that was it. I was going to have horses again. <laughs> and I, that was part of the deal, though. Like, when we bought that property in Costa Rica, we were having horses again. So I shared part of that story on the podcast with Warwick about the herd of horses that I rescued when we were guided down this dirt road looking for this saddle we were going to buy. And we found these, this disheveled farm and these four horses that were emaciated and dying. And this mare was nursing her foal and eating rocks. And the owner had moved and left them behind. And there was just this caretaker there who had the saddle for sale. And by now, we already had three horses, because we've been there a couple years now. And, but we knew what we had to do. So of course, we, we brought them home. But the story, this is after, um, one with one of them and my little grandson with another. But the story that I didn't tell on the podcast, I don't think, <laughs> was that these horses were the same horses that we had met five years earlier when we first went looking for horses. And we had no idea when we went to look at that saddle that we were going to the same place. It's like three hours from our house, and everything grows. It's jungly in Costa Rica, and it doesn't look the same. And because at that time we went to look, the farm was beautiful breeding farm. The horses were gorgeous Andalusians. But it, the ones that were for sale were all young stallions, and they were very expensive. And it wasn't for us at the time. So we decided to pass on them. But five years later, these horses have called us back to save them. Like, what is the likelihood that after all of that time, right, I already have three horses now, that we would unknowingly be guided back to these same horses? That is no coincidence. That was another miracle. So now we have seven horses, and I'm noticing a pattern with these new, four new horses. They all seemed a bit disconnected and shut down, not very interested in humans. So I began looking into different training methods to train this out of these horses. Now, we're still living a modest life, so I needed to earn some extra income now to support all of these horses, and I had this brainstorm. I thought, I'll bring like-minded clinicians to Costa Rica and do equine retreats to help pay for all these horses. And then I'll be able to learn what to do with them because there was no education in Costa Rica around horsemanship. And I had just finished reading Carolyn's book, Naked Liberty. And 
I knew that that was the answer. That's exactly what I was looking for. So I contacted Carolyn and she sent an instructor to Costa Rica and to do a clinic. And now I'm really excited. Like I'm getting ready to do my first waterhole ritual, host my first waterhole ritual clinic. And I'm planning to use this beautiful stable property that friends of our own, ours own, you can't see the barn, but this place is magnificent, has a gorgeous arena. And what do you think happens? <laughs> a 7.2 earthquake happens. Yeah, and it hits our village and it just wipes out that beautiful property and the whole entire area up there. But lucky for us, <laughs> it did not damage our land, but it did a lot of damage to the village. So since I couldn't use this stable property, um, my only option was to cancel or to do it up on my property. And I had no arena or anything. So we gathered up a bunch of that big, beautiful bamboo out of the jungle and we put up this bamboo arena. There it is. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm like, you know, it's not my style, but like, at least we're having the clinic. We don't have to refund money and all that, right? <laughs> so the people arrive, and of course, they have no idea what's happened, but they are blown away by this view and this magnetic energy on this land. And they're raving about this bamboo arena. Even Tyler was like, that bamboo arena is so cool. <laughs> so who knew, right? So by the end of this five-day clinic, my horses were all checking in. It was amazing. They were showing up entirely different. They were optimistic, and it just seemed like magic to me. And I soon realized that my horses were not shut down and disconnected. It was my vibration that was the problem. It was me. I was the one who was disconnected in my interactions with them. But it was life changing and sharing horsemanship and meeting new friends and going deeper into self-realization was such an amazing experience for me. And I knew I had found my purpose. I said, I want to share this method with the world. I want to host horsemanship retreats in Costa Rica. and. So I started doing equine wellness retreats because I wasn't certified yet or anything, and so I'm doing bringing other clinicians in, and I start studying with Carolyn directly, and became certified eventually, and then within a few years I became Carolyn's business partner. So the universe had once again been guiding me to my purpose. So now I'm hosting retreats and I'm teaching clinics in the waterhole rituals, not only at my place in Costa Rica, but, at, but in the United States as well. And in 2020, I'm going to Carolyn's Ranch to teach a 30-day internship with her. And my husband had planned to come at the two-week mark. And so three days after he gets to California, the pandemic, the whole world shuts down, and they announced the outbreak of COVID-19. So they locked the borders to Costa Rica. We could not return to our home. It was really, really scary. You know, three dogs, seven horses. I have amazing caretakers that are like crazy good but it was still really scary. And, but there was no death and illness in our family, and I know many people suffered through that, but for us, this was kind of devastating. And, but by now, I'm seeing everything differently. I'm looking for the blessings in everything. And after the initial shock, I see this as another miracle sent down from the heavens. I am like locked down with Carolyn Resnick. <laughs> who gets that, right? I mean, who gets that? Now, anyone who knows Carolyn will tell you that nothing gives her more pleasure than sharing her knowledge about horses. 
and I'm there with her and I'm taking it all in and it's accelerating my education like I could have never had otherwise. And it gets even better. During that time, I think I have to, there we go. During that time, I was given my soul horse, a horse named Pericles. Now, I had already met Pericles in 2018 at a clinic I was teaching up in Aptos where he, his owner, where his farm is. And it was shared with me that this horse was very dominant and he was not responding to traditional training methods. So I began teaching the clinic and communicating with him using the water hole rituals. And within about 30 minutes, this horse was so magnetically connected to me. It was a soul connection. It, it, I felt it so deeply and so did he. It was amazing. And everyone there witnessed it too. It was different. And now two years later, during the pandemic, he's gifted to me and Carolyn, and he and I are reunited again. Like, you know, this it was so, I, mean, I never got him out of my heart, this horse. What a miracle. Another horse that circled back around to me in a seemingly coincidental way. And this horse has taught me more about using my vibration as my tack than any horse I have ever met. It was synchrodestiny at its best, for sure. So Carol and I realized that we have found our exhibition horse, OK? So that's what we're going to do. And, and Ava Jones, my friend who's here with me now, and my husband and I decide to take him on a two-week road trip. And we were going to take him back up to where he came from, to this beautiful 85-acre ranch, and see if he would travel well and go in and out of arenas and stuff. So when we get there, the wildfires break out. <laughs> we are attracting natural disasters everywhere we go. So the wildfires break out. The owner gets sick with COVID, and we offered to stay. We rescued 35 horses, Ava and my husband and myself, to this ranch because she's on the evacuation route. And she invites us to stay. So we buy this RV, and we sit it in the redwoods. It was amazing. But we get to stay till the end of the pandemic. What a gift, right? because she knew we weren't going to go home yet. So we were there almost a year. And who do you think I meet for the first time? <laughs> <laughs> so I was on the phone with Warwick, and we were scheduling the podcast. And he asked me where I was in the area, and he told me that he spent, is my time up? Yeah. Really? Oh. <laughs> That's weird. I stuck. Oh, 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 okay. So, anyway, he said that this ranch. Are you going to kick me off the stage? I have it timed. It's, mine was 17 minutes. Anyway, um, so, uh, anyway, he asked me if he could come to a clinic that I was having up there, and he did come, and that's how we met. And we invited him. If you ever, you know, go to Costa Rica, come visit us. And we always say that nobody comes. Like, you know, even family doesn't hardly come. So anyway, I just want to say that I can now see that these so-called catastrophes are actually blessings in disguise that were guiding me to my purpose. And my perspective in life now is entirely different. I look for the miracle in every moment. So if that hurricane had not hit Key West, I may have never moved to Costa Rica. And if the earthquake had not destroyed that arena, I may never have been able to envision having clinics and retreats up on my property. And I, had I not gotten locked down with Carolyn in the pandemic, I would have probably never received my spirit horse, nor had that special time with Carolyn. And if I had not gone down that road trip with Pericles and the wildfires, I would have never met Warwick. So the coincidences or little miracles that happen every day of our life are hints that the universe has a much bigger plan for us than we ever dreamed for ourselves. But if we're not paying attention or listening to our intuition and we're walking through our lives blindly, we'll never be able to see the miracles. Our vibration is connecting us to all that is. And that's how I know that my vibration is my tact. 
and this video was supposed to be pushed a while ago, but I got worried about my time. But anyway, thank you all so very much. Well, at least you get to see my video. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, we're going to do something. I can feel it. When we stood like this in Costa Rica, and the universe told you to bring it, that's what it wanted you to bring. Thank you so much.